Welcome back. You're watching the Forbes India One CEO Club in partnership with Google Cloud, a unique series that recognizes and celebrates India's finest CEOs. Our next guest was already an established CEO in the software industry when he took a deep interest in genetics from 2009 onwards. Very quickly, he realized that many global genomic projects did not have indigenous DNA samples from India and Asia. He co-founded MedGenome in 2013 to solve that very problem. Today, several pharmaceutical and biotech companies depend on companies like MedGenome for targeted therapy and faster innovation. To find out more, I have with me the Chairman and CEO of MedGenome, Mr. Sam Santosh. Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sam, two decades uh, in the software industry, uh, in product, uh, product engineering, what drew you to genetics? Yeah, in around mid-2000, uh, the, the human genome project uh, got complete and that was the first time a genome of a human being was sequenced and that attracted a lot of publicity. And I also was wondered like, like, what is what is happening and uh, what is the impact of this. So that got me interested into the subject and then it was like a, the start of a long journey. Uh, did your legacy in uh, product engineering have any role to play at all in terms of the intersection of genetics and technology? Uh, very much so, because uh, uh, though I was in uh, product engineering, uh, or the main parts we were focusing on was uh, system level programming. So we would handle a lot of source code, you know, whether it was the operating system or device drivers, you know, or filters and things like that. So I was always amazed at the power of the source code, right? And when the genome was sequenced, uh, it was, I felt like a, a very similar situation where we were actually getting the source code of life. And then you are now you are getting the power, right, of, of what you would get in from like just doing another program. You are being able to analyze and understand the source code of uh, not only humans, uh, but uh, you know, any, any living organism. What's the technology apparatus that's needed for genetic sequencing? But, so the, basically you can see uh, genetic sequencing as uh, two parts. Uh, one part you can call the wet lab. Uh, where you go through a number of steps of actually taking a DNA out of a material, whether it is blood or uh, tissue, and then um, magnifying the DNA and then putting it into so-called a sequencing machine, uh, which would convert uh, that biological material uh, and get the source code. The source code basically is four letters here in this case, four chemicals which DNA is made of. So that four chemicals, four letters that you get. So that is one part of the process. For that you need very expensive machinery, nice uh, high quality lab you have to avoid contamination and all that. But that is half the story. The other half is the investment and the infrastructure needed for analyzing this data. Because though we say four letters, uh, human beings code runs into terabytes, you know, repeat of these letters. So uh, getting the data out, uh, doing the quality check because uh, the DNA is cut into many, many small pieces before they are sequenced. That's a technology that came out. So you're stitching it back and trying to, uh, you know, get the, get the order of the other letters uh, becomes tough. So you need to have a lot of quality checks. Then once you get that and get that part of the data, then you need a lot more uh, uh, tools to figure out what that means. So this is the second part of it. So both these uh, need a lot of uh, money as well as time and uh, knowledge. Could you outline the business itself for MedGenome? Uh, how, who does the company serve? Yeah. So MedGenome has uh, two lines of business. Uh, one line, which is our, the, you can say the basic core, is the diagnostic services that we provide here. So just like the way uh, these technologies were not there before, when it came, it enabled a set of new tests or new diagnostics. So these new diagnostics doesn't replace old tests. So they are completely enlarging the market uh, with a set of tests in across many domains uh, that can give more light into why somebody got a disease. Hey, was a gene responsible for that disease, right? So that is a new set of findings. So that enabled the diagnostic business to grow. So that is, we were the pioneers in India to start the genetic testing using DNA sequencing and uh, that is one part of the business that has grown well. Now as this grew, we started getting projects from pharma companies. They were more than happy to give us projects where we could sequence and then share the insights of the data with them on a collaborative approach. So we keep, you know, the data doesn't go out, we keep the data, but we allow them to study that and get insights from that. So that's the second line of business, uh, which is mainly funded by uh, pharma companies as well as uh, academic labs, uh, both in India and uh, across the world. 
leading labs uh, or have projects and they get grants. So, these are the two revenue streams. So, that is the core business of Medjino. But uh, lately in the last couple of years, we have been able to move more into licensing as well. So, we get a third revenue uh, which is like uh, um, uh, uh, we are able to uh, provide tools and, and, and ability to analyze the data. Okay. And how big is the network of the uh, next generation sequencing labs? for as far as my genome is concerned? Uh, no, in this case, the investment is heavy, right? So, uh, we keep one centralized lab. So, Bangalore is where our uh, main centralized lab is and uh, equipments cost uh, millions of dollars. So, it's not possible or not needed to replicate these equipments across the country. So, we do have smaller labs uh, mainly for doing fast turnaround tests which uh, may not do all the sequencing of the genes but to look at maybe one gene and specific cases so that way we have a few labs across the country but our main focus is to bring the samples across to bangalore and do it in our uh, high throughput lab here so this uh, uh, for example, it's the largest lab in this part of the world, actually in South or Southeast Asia. There is uh, there is another lab with this much capacity. Okay. What's the total headcount of MedGenome now? Uh, MedGenome is about 500 people. Uh, what's the road ahead now for genetic sequencing? What what do you see as the future of MedGenome and you know, yeah, in the future? Yeah, we are very much at the at a, at a, at a well, rapid growth stage, I think. So new things are coming up. Similarly, in cancer, liquid biopsy is coming up. That is just taking the patient's blood. Okay. You can look at the floating tumor cells and find out what cancer he has. So, these type of things, uh, you know, the, 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 the opportunities are becoming much, much bigger. Okay. So, we see uh, genomics being practically becoming used on a, in a daily manner, right? And, 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 and its applications becoming having tremendous impact. I think what Eric Topol said from, uh, from womb to tomb. You okay. Know, your whole life cycle, you will be using genomics. Okay. Uh, Sam, it was a delight speaking with you. Thanks for making time for this interview. That was Sam Santosh, Chairman and CEO of MedGenome, talking about the role of technology to help biotech and pharmaceutical companies innovate faster. It brings us to the end of this episode of the Forbes and CEO Club in partnership with Google Cloud. But do join me next time as I meet another CEO scripting a digital future for his company. Until next time, Goodbye.